done since 1990, not every workshop, but one of the, the, this is an exact quote from Winston Churchill. And many architects use it, many people use it when they're talking about learning spaces. Uh, we shape our buildings and then they shape up. This is when they were remodeling uh, in 1943 after the World War, uh, the Houses of Parliament. And someone wanted to build a brand new building to say, this is a new building. And, and uh, Mr. Churchill um, said that, that, you know, the way the um, House of Commons was designed is perfect for what it is. And when we talk went along the way in this, that the space kind of allows you to do things and it makes you uh, what you become and how you become. And he said, look, we can talk to each other across uh, uh, the building. Uh, we, so we see who's talking about what. And, and if someone disagrees with his side, her side on the right, they can walk over to the left and everyone will see them moving. So it's, it's built for what the House of Parliament does. And we're going to talk a lot about spaces that are built for what they want you to do and become. And so we'll, we'll come back to this later. Mary, the next one. So one of the things your faculty do at, at Westminster is kind of um, figure out what, what, how they put the curriculum together, what they want you to become when you graduate. And that's the charting the course. And so when I sit down with a group of, uh, go to a campus and help talk with faculty and their design professionals, we, the first thing we do in thinking about planning a space, whether it be a science space, a library space, a renovation of the student center or something, that we put down and say, what do we want our students to be able to do when they graduate? And this one is by, and some of you know, maybe Tammy knows, um, by the, the former a, a dean at the University of Minnesota, which was one of the largest, first large uh, universities in the country to do active learning, sitting at round tables and having students work together in circles. And when I put a book together, and I've got it right here, <laughs> on spaces that work, I asked Robin to tell us her story. And so this is, I asked each of the people talking about their spaces to put what they want their students to do. And you can look at this later if you want to pull it down, but you'll see there to be ready for more school, um, work person to person cook a delicious meal. And I said, you really want to leave that in there? She says, no, I want my students to be able to do anything when, when they graduate. So think about this. And this is what your faculty think about. At the end, we're going to talk about what the rooms enable you to do. And so you can maybe pull up some of these out of your head if you can remember very quickly, um, some of these developed leadership skills. Um, this, I just threw this in because this is part of the theory of, of learning spaces. And um, to relate to spaces, to have a deep love of spaces. It's how important it is to build spaces in which people feel comfortable. I really appreciated the opportunity to look at your Padlets. And I got two themes out of the Padlets and I, I, took, I took those two themes and kind of wove this presentation around those themes. And one of the themes was the first sentence there in the second paragraph, spaces in which people feel comfortable emotionally connected and so many of you talked about spaces that I, I'd like to sit outside and just be alone and many of those are spaces with nature but this you can see these are spaces that, this is a, uh, a this is the zipper between an old science building and a new science building these steps and so they built it so you could do classes there too so you can see where they could sit in the, in the classes there but that's a comfortable space to be in so just keep that in your mind Mary and um, this is another um, researcher. Wendy is a cognitive scientist, and she does a lot with spaces at Georgia Tech. And this is what she said, you know, when you walk into a space, you'll be able to understand what you can do in that space. Now, I don't have to have all of you jump up and say, I can see a sandbox. And I know exactly what to do in a sandbox. But that's kind of one of the um, things we're going to talk about is when you walk into a space, what, what does it allow you to do? And you're gonna write a job description for a space halfway through this story uh, when I get done. Mary, the next one. And this is again, another way for professors uh, to capture what professors is kind of the same thing before, but we get very serious about what students should be able to do in a space when we're thinking about space. That there's a, they feel that they're invited to participate. We're going to talk about building communities and about spaces that are welcoming and that's increasingly important in days in our times when there seems to be 
um, there need everybody needs to feel part of a community and not as separate from a community. Collaboration intensive as a treat. So there's just a lot. So um, I I just wanted to go um, ability to share ideas readily. And we're going to talk about spaces um, in a few minutes. And if you can, I'm just going to give you 30 seconds to read that screen because that's going to be important for when you have your group conversations and reporting out. Thirty seconds is up, and so we'll come back, Mary. The next one. So this is a simply put what you should be able to do in a space. And when, before we started paying attention to spaces, people sat in rows, if you would believe that. And Al Gore, when he was running for the presidency, one of his speeches began with, "We could teach them in rows when they were going to work in rows." And so if this is preparing for the future, you can't prepare for the future today and sit in rows. Um, the, bill, the picture on the, on the left is from Georgia Tech and it's, a, it's got a space for that many students and four white walls. And so what those students can do to work together and can express what they're learning on the walls and the little window is for the faculty member to look at them. Next, Mary. So we're gonna talk about what signals a space makes? And just think about that a little bit. What's a signal? This is from Stanford from their design school. And um, see, in a, if you can read, I'm not gonna read what you can see there too, but see, this is what the space, that signal, there's a very, the, that space really signals what you can do in that space. There's no uh, ambiguity about what, it, and it's empty, you can do anything. There's nothing holding you back. There's not any sand there. Maybe that would be more explicit if there were sand. But um, so you can see that's a, um, can you all read that there? Nothing is a mistake. That's part of learning, that nothing is a mistake. There's not a mistake you can make in that space. Mary, the next one. Here's another one. And you can again see the different kind of, um, if you go back to what the, um, professors want you to become to be able to work in teams. When you go out and work in a business, you're going to be working in collaborative teams. So, so the spaces allow you, this space allows that. So when you think about in your, in your working groups, making a job description for a space, allowing group work and learning how to collaborate and work in teams is a top of the list 21st century um, job requirement. Next one, Mary. This is again, this gets back to the Georgia Tech one. I just wanted, I, I'm, not, I'm like that. And this one is in a, in a, a student center um, uh, uh, in, in Florida, uh, uh, Ringling Brothers, Ringling, Ringling College in Florida. But you can see what that space is that lifts your spirit. So it's a space that says, this is a place to have fun and do interesting things, but still talking together and creating. Next one, Mary. This is a different kind of space, but it's still an essential kind of space for learning to happen. And it teaches, in this space, you learn in a different way, but it's part of your whole aspect of learning. Next one, Mary. Now, this is a maker space at Stanford. And again, it's a space when you walk in and say, wow, I can do anything here. And I was thinking about this when I read the, um, a padlet from the new um, fraternity that they were just built. It was a new fraternity and they're trying to make a fraternity that really serves people into the future. And I thought a new fraternity needs a space like that. It's a space to have fun. This is a place to have fun. This again is a, um, another place where people are working together using 21st century instrumentation. So it's preparing you for your future. So you're going to go out and be able to do things with computers that, um, my children and my grandchildren, well, my grandchildren would be able to do so. Mary, next. And again, this is Clemson University. And it's a, build, a building that started out as first and second year engineering. Now it's a building that all the campus can use. And the way they designed this building is they went out and interviewed all their recent alums and the uh, employers of their recent alums and said, what do you, what do you, want our students to be able to do for you when they hire you. And it was all kind of this communication um, with, with technology. And so you can't walk but 
15 feet where there's another, not another screen that size. So it's a building set up. And I want you to go back and think about the sandbox. You know exactly what you can do in the sandbox. You know exactly what you can do in this learning space. And as it turns out, it's a, this is a seven, eight year old building, a social distance, distancing space. You can see there's every other seat is used. And so it's a, um, I think it's a, it was a great building then. It's a great building now. Next one, Mary. So these are all the pictures you have just seen. And so now in your groups that Mary has sorted you out and we'll put you in the groups. And Sophie, you got a dog? That's very interesting. And you're going to talk within your group um, about when Mary's going to put that, that picture back up on the screen. And you're going to talk about a job description for a group, for a space that enables you to become. What should it, what, what should it enable you to do? Now, I hope you caught the introduction to this from what I've just said. Um, and I'll, um, I'll let Mary, um, if somebody's really stuck, um, I'll, I'll repeat it back, but you should be able to look at any one of those photos. And it doesn't have to be about a specific photo. What does a space enable a learner to become? Think of it as a job description for a space. You're on now for about 17 minutes. And then somebody in your group will report out. We'll go around and have each of the groups report out. So here you go. And yes. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to send you into breakout rooms. Please accept your invitation. Make sure you have a designated speaker and respond to the prompt that Jeannie just gave. It's also typed into the chat. What does a space enable a learner to become? And focus on that job description. And we will give you a two minute warning before we pull you back in and ask the designated speakers to share. So please everybody, I hope you had a good conversation and a productive conversation. So Mary, again, how many groups do we have? We have uh, nine rooms, but I believe that that does not include your room. So Eight we, groups. yes. Okay, let's just start with group number one and go that way. So people alerted to the fact that, oh, our group is next, and who is going to report out for us? So group number one, you're setting the pattern now for how this happens, and it happens in two minutes, for less than two minutes for everybody. And is, um, so group number one, Mary, are you going to open up for group number one? Sure, that's Amber, Emily, Madison, and Michaela. Who's speaking? I am. Okay, so what we talked about was how the color and the size of the room could affect how you perform in it um, personally. So if it's like a darker colored room, you might not be as motivated, but if it's a brightly colored room or if there's like posters on the walls, um, then you might feel more like engaged and open in the classroom. Thanks, that's a very, very good insight. And so let's keep all these together. So when you take over a classroom at, at Westminster, you can make sure that happens. Group number two. That's Jacob, Jason, Matthew, and Stacia. And why don't whoever reports, if you could have your camera on, that'd be great so we can see you. Hello, this is Stacia. Um, so we tried to think of about three really good things that we think a effective learning space would have. Um, so one we had uh, that the space should be able to foster communication and collaboration. So like what we saw in a lot of the um, example pictures that you showed us, there were places where people could be in groups and then places where they could spread out if need be. So classrooms that have that movability are really nice. Um, classrooms or just other learning spaces should be able to adapt to technology that will come and go and also have room for student technology that they have to bring in or if they have like one to one devices. And then also um, various interactive surfaces for differentiated instruction. Uh, this could go for like lower and upper grades. So if you have like the tables that are whiteboards or if you become more creative and someone mentioned specifically like writing on windows, if you have windows to write on, uh, just something to get up and move and do something different. Good, but we're going to have to design a beautiful learning space new then. So I think next we have 
that would have been the teacher group. So now we'll move on to Corey, Carly, Olivia, and Paige. I can go. Let me turn my. Thank you, Hi. Paige. <laughs> Hello. So we talked mainly about um, more of the community aspect of what a learning space would be. So we talked about how um, certain spaces are more conducive for students feeling more confident and more comfortable um, and that sort of thing. Um, certain spaces can make them feel more empathetic as well. So building those that community um, sort of aspect in the classroom, um, empathy. What else did we touch on? Oh, we also talked about like in the more physical aspect, we also brought up, um, it allows students to feel more involved, like in ways too. So um, having those physical attributes that really get students um, hands on with their learning and things like that. Um, I think that mainly covers everything that we talked about. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a wonderful classroom we're designing together. We call it the GD Narama Memorial. Um, is four next? So actually, it's literally the breakout room six, and that's Abigail, Ethan, Jordan, and Nikki. Okay. Hi. I was going to talk for our group. Um, so a lot of the stuff we talked about goes along with what they said. Um, I think um, a big thing we talked about was having a lot of different visual opportunities on the wall. So we talked um, how we liked the chalkboard or the whiteboard walls, um, but also integrating um, a monitor or a TV, um, like we have the one-to-one -one here. So most TVs are installed with an Apple TV, so it's really easy to get um, connected in that way. Um, we also mentioned, like others said, being visually appealing, the bright walls. Um, we all liked the natural lighting versus the one at Harvard that seemed very just dull and not inviting. Um, we liked the natural lights. Um, we mentioned um, Hazel, on the third floor of Hazel, there's massive windows and it makes the space feel a lot bigger because you can see outside um, and how that can be inviting to getting work done. Um, the last thing we talked about was being able to manipulate the spaces similar to what they said, um, like being able to move chairs, move tables, um, but also there being different types of tables or chairs. Um, a couple of the girls mentioned that they get really fidgety when they work. So they said that a rocking chair or a swivel chair actually can help them, um, you know, have something to occupy their mind. Um, so yeah, it ties into what they, uh, what some other people were saying, but a little bit, a little bit different. So. Thank you very, very much to you and your group are really pressing as it all of those are. Mary, you announce the next one. Sure. The next one is Allie, Ben, D, and Grace. Sorry, I'm trying to, okay, there it is. So in our group, we kind of talked about, um, you know, each space kind of um, basically represents a different job. And so um, in my classroom, um, I just wanted my students to be like learners of lives. So what does that mean? Um, or what does that look like? So like in my class, I probably have, you know, a bunch of books um, just to give them a wide range of, um, you know, just resources to look at, you know. Um, you know, autobiographies, you know, nonfiction, fiction. I mean, you can learn a lot from, you know, those kind of books. So um, overall, I think my space, you know, just having a bunch of books, you know, just having them that relaxed mindset or just setting that relaxed um, state so where they can learn and just have resources to learn, if that makes sense. So um, just having that right, wide range of uh, variety, you know, to access, you know, each part of lessons or not lessons, but, you know, um, lessons that they incorporate from those books, if that makes sense. So um, basically the jobs kind of um, altered depending on um, the space is what we kind of decided on, so. But the job would be to have all available resources that the students might need mm -hmm. in that space and easily accessible. Thanks very much, D. Nice, so next we have Emily, Kylie, Rora, Sophia, and Will. Um, so we kind of discuss almost about everything that everything has been said because we're like one of the last groups to go. But I think another thing for like 
touching wise is in a classroom is like another like for kinesthetic learners or kinesthetic learners to have touching materials and then for auditory too and stuff and then also having like adaptable and supportive teachers or professors or whatever to have good learning styles for that group whoever needs it mm -hmm. in the space you, you, this is going to be a wonderful space if all of these things are the professors in this call taking a count on this. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> they can make sure all the classrooms for which they have responsibility um, reflect what these students are coming up. <laughs> and next, we have a couple more. So we have Dominic, Emily, Lucas, and Megan. Yeah, so for our group, we were just kind of talking about it's really since we we're in the last ones we kind of have like our broad range of like uh, ideas but everyone kind of said it uh but, we, but mainly what we were talking about is having like a bigger space like bigger and like bigger learning space because uh we were just thinking like the the more you have or like the more um i guess area or bigger space you have like the more ideas you can bounce off of one another and um it's just a good i guess kind of like it's just it's just good to get like a bunch of people together just like in a big space because then we just bounce off the ideas off of one another and not only that but uh just to really see where uh, everybody's just uh, coming from because like if one person learns off of here and this is how they learn we can just get them into that group and then just so on and so forth so we're just talking about like the group mindness and just kind of the same like bounce off one another so you don't want any tight cloisters, but you don't want to sit in rows. Well, we were saying too that like it, I think we believe like the bigger space or just even having just like like whirly chairs or just having like something to have in your hand and grasp in your hand, and that's how your your auto, that's how your brain can move. Yeah. Nice. So. Thank you. And Jeannie, we did skip number three. My mistake. I apologize. We still have to hear from Krista Jackson, Sarah Tory, Group Three. Awesome. I'll speak for that. You can come back to us. So I'm Jackson. Hello. Um, so kind of some things that we said were to practice group dynamics, but while doing that, we also want to enhance the personal capability to learn and focus. So as well as having group spaces, we want to be able to go to a space where you can just solo out and hang out by yourself and just focus in on your work as well. Then we also want to encourage free thinking through the open spaces, have a lot of room. Then I also like the quotes. I like the simple, like short ones that you can just take a glance at when you're feeling lost and maybe you can find a word that just catches your mind and inspires you or gets an idea to come back and help you out. And then also to adapt and change over time, like Stacia was saying earlier with the technology, like that one, and then Tori and I brought up a really good point to be flexible and have the ability for everyone to be, or have the opportunity to be like a leader. So not really have roles like split up, segregated, like how a teacher has a desk in the front and the rows and chairs in the back. It's kind of like everyone has the ability to be a leader or to like stand up and lead the group. So. Cool. I don't know. I think we should all clap. Can everybody see everybody clapping? That was, that was really quite wonderful. So Mary, let's move forward. As I said, there were, I got two, two um, insights out of your Padlets. And one of them was more classroom oriented. And the second group, and Mary, you can put it up, um, is, is about um, building community. And so you can move to the next slide. And so here I have a lot of um, different kinds of posts. And we're, we're going to um, go by through these one by one. But I just wanted to show you the, the um, the different ways that campuses can talk about, can uh, that students can take responsibility for shaping the spaces. And most of these are student shaped, many of these are student shaped spaces or spaces shaped specifically with students in the mind, in mind. So um, I'm going to now go through these one by one. And I don't know if we have time for everybody to comment. But uh, Mary's just gonna holler out a name, Paige or Jason or somebody. And so be prepared to be called on. And what I want, again, is what, is, what does the space allow you to do? And, and this is the community nature of work. And what, I think Westminster is probably the ideal um, 
college <laughs> to talk about this. So uh, let's go, with Mary, now we're going to go one by one to kind of look at these and have them think about them, and not in your groups, because we don't have time to pause and to have all the groups. So let's, um, and if you want to talk, Mary, can they chat and say, I want to say something? Sure. I think it's perfectly okay, as long as we don't step on each other's toes. If somebody wants to hop out and, and chat about one, that's great. And if, I'll give them five seconds. Otherwise, I can call on someone if that moves it along. Cool. Okay. Gonna give them one by one, right? Sure. You're gonna follow now. Do you wanna go on these or back on the other ones? No, I wanna go forward now. Okay. So. How about? Okay. Somebody wants to tell me what's happening in that space that builds community. Let's have Stacia's group. Uh, the desks themselves are arranged in such a way that small groups are already formed. So it's kind of that establishing collaboration right there from the get-go in the classroom itself. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Next one. And let's go with Jackson's group. I'd say that um, that learning space is connecting you to the community by everyone that walks by, like you're able to see everyone that's walking by, and you're also able to um, recognize the campus, see, or look out and see the campus. So, I mean, you're connected to like the environment around you. It's not just you stuck in a room by yourself. Like in reality, even though it looks like it is, you, you can see everything that's going on around you. Many of you, if you remember in the Padlet, you said you'd like to step away from the crowd and kind of move into your own space and just have some time. And the uh, education students may or may not know, but have they done the research on how looking into nature really improves how you learn and how you find things around when you're learning. This is a renovated, um, uh, what do you call that? Microfiche library at Duke University in the basement. And they, they re repurposed it and they've got lots of classrooms on the other side. They really wanted, as many of you mentioned in what you said, different kinds of spaces so students can really have um, different kinds of um, experiences and different opportunities. They can go back and forth from the classroom. Nice. Next, Mary. This is the um i see open space and having like whiteboards and chalkboards so that they can move around this is a hallway this is a landing at the top of a land so it's a bump into space Who wants to jump in? I can say something on this one. Okay. Um, this one, I, I don't like when I have to do homework in my lap, which might be the, maybe the um, goal of this is, you know, it's not about writing something down. It's forcing you to actually talk to each other, discuss with each other look at each other. Um, I think nature is a good thing as well. Like you were saying, I think sometimes, <laughs> I remember one class we had, um, the teacher kept closing the window because people kept looking out at it during class. And I don't know why, but that always made me so angry. Cause like, if I want to look at a dog that's walking by, I should be able to look at a dog that's walking by. Um, so I think sometimes getting them out in, in the nature as well, kind of um, takes them out of this is a class, this is what you're supposed to be learning, those constructs, and, and puts it into a new perspective. Thank you very much, Mickey. So we've talked a little bit about this, but I would like more conversation of who would like to say something.
I should have said to my earlier. It's like uh, robotics or uh, biology. I can't tell. I'm, my eyes are not very good. Could you explain, is it biology or uh, for mechanical engineering? We're, are we looking at the same one? I'm looking at the blackboard, the hand yeah. in the back. Are those blood vessels or are those electrical wires? You got me. This is a building that serves all students, so it could be either. Then okay. it's a uh, small group or medium group community uh, with couches. Uh, can you still use soft spaces though with COVID? Are we thinking about not using the, the carpeted surfaces anymore? You know, um, who is this? Is this Jacob or who is this? Mm -hmm. Jacob um, Handelman. Did I turn Jacob? on my video? No, no. Yeah, well, I see a balloon. Um, I had a hard time finding spaces that that didn't mitigate against, that, that were at least somewhat thinking about COVID. But I don't obviously have very many of those spaces. Right now. What are uh, procedures for something like that? I think it they're throwing a lot of them out at uh, the um, the pre-K school here in Fulton. They had to take out all stuff like beanbag chairs, carpets. Uh, I kept my son home this year because they hadn't installed all of the, um, uh -huh. the windows at the desks. They're putting in uh, plexiglass and all the windows. And I just, I feel like the COVID situation is making uh, especially younger kids that are supposed to be able to run around the kindergarten classes. They're trying right. to find new ways. They used to have like sand pits where everybody would stick their hands in together. I'm concerned. I like the setup. It would have, it looks like a scene from Friends, like they're all in the cafe doing something together. But in reality, I don't know that it's as doable now as it once was. But uh, that's sadly. something, a good thing for you to think about because you could do this same thing and just say an easy fix. I think they have six or seven of these in the lobby at, at Clemson. Mm -hmm. All we would have to do is get different furniture. So they could say we don't have to. I mean, I, I'm making this up because I'm not. Um, I think like IKEA is not going to hold up. There's a lot of IKEA in China and it's not going to hold up. And it's more plastic surfaces like the Swedish style of furniture, uh -huh. which uses plastic and then metal legs, but I think that um, it changes the dynamic because you can't lay back like you can in a couch. Like these, right. this is a very soft surface that makes people more comfortable. I don't, I think uh, people are going to be a bit more on edge with plastic and it's going to break more often. I've broken several plastic chairs at my son's uh, pre-K in China when we were there uh, several years ago. So uh -huh. painting his face at a carnival a Chinese uh, lantern carnival, and I broke their chairs. <laughs> I, <laughs> well, I think one of the things that um, one of the things that if your group wants to move forward, would be to research that because um, I bet you ten dollars uh, for that there are furniture people who are dealing with that. I get those in the email every day. But the 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 purpose is now this is different. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I can speak on this one. Uh, this seems like a really non-threatening like meetup place to just kind of relax between classes. Um, and then you can also see those people up there maybe are like catching up on a chapter in their book. Um, but this seems like a good like halfway point to just stop and catch your breath. You know, the interesting thing, <laughs> and I'd forgotten, who was that? I forgot. Ooh, the, I saw the name up. So this Tori. is a, a stairway between, to the right is their old science building and to the left is their new science building. And around the corner, they put a uh, food cart. And people fought against it. But when I visited there for the dedication, they said in less than a year, it was had the most high income money for, for people buying food at that food cart because they could sit on the stairs and eat there. And no one had anticipated that. They also teach classes there. So, so it's, it's a multiple, but Jason does this, or who, I'm sorry, I've lost, is it? 
So this might be a better thing. Everybody has cement chairs from now on. Okay, let's move on so we um, keep moving. This is an interesting one. The lower right is what the, on the left side used to be. And the facilities officer walked around the, was walking around the building one day and he saw people on the lower right sitting on the floor. And he thought, even though they're soft chairs, and I apologize for that, but he and the students re remodeled that space. So they went, just went ahead and, and did it. Um, any comments from any of you on that space or that process? I'm kind of wondering uh, what about the original space drew students to sit there, even though there weren't chairs, you know? It, it's, it's a pathway between the, the cafeterias around the corner and, and then that's a beat, and then they go to toward me, toward you, um, to classrooms. So it's just a waiting space, waiting room. And um, they hadn't thought about it, but you can see what, what happens there. So they've got soft chairs, sorry about that, but they've got plants. They've got art on the wall, which they didn't have before. So this was a, a student took over. And, um, and now they've done that on every building on campus at the University of Illinois, Chicago. They, they found all sorts of corners and made them student owned and the students helped plan them. Next. What makes this a special place? It's home. It's home. It's a beautiful home. Next one, Mary. Remember we're talking about spaces that nurture and build community. May somebody make a comment on, on this space? You're all lecture, lecturing in the beauty of the buildings. Okay, next one, Mary. Mm -hmm. What makes this a good learning space? Is this chemistry? I can't tell what classroom is. Is it a science class? It's actually the anatomy lab upstairs, I'm pretty sure. I don't want to be a doctor. That would be cool. I'm not that smart. It looks like fun. I like biology in high school. Give it a shot. Next one. Let's talk, let's have several people make comments on this. I can see your your names anyway. Allie. I was just getting ready to speak. <laughs> um, so this is in CSC. And while I've actually never seen people pull their chairs out in the middle like that to work in a group dynamic, it is a really great idea because it's such a big open space that you could get so many people in there. And I think that sometimes a bigger group dynamic is a better group dynamic because it allows for multiple voices to be heard and multiple opinions to be seen. Um, and then if they didn't have the rolling chairs, they could also go over there to that like little lounge area and talk there in like a more casual setting but the way that they pulled the chairs out in the middle makes me really think that they're working very hard on an assignment or a project or something nikki uh to add on this too i know right around the corner is a vending machine <laughs> um but yeah i i've never seen this space set up in this way um but I have, it is, it is not unknown or not uncommon to see people randomly wheeling chairs between rooms um, to, to fit their needs. Um, I think CSC in general just has a lot of really good nooks and crannies like this where there's, there's uh, desks built in, computers. So CSC is just a really good place for that. I'm kind of watching the time and I don't remember how many slides I had, but when you said rolling around, um, let me, I'll, you can look at that. And uh, one of my campus architects that I'm working with, kind of in the, caught in the middle of, of COVID, on the way to COVID, they have, they have, they have music chair, music stands on wheels. 
and the students can put their computers on the music stand and wheel around the building and stop and talk to each other. So they've thought about the social distancing and everything like that. So what about this visual is, is important? Church uh, dedicated this, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary, I think we just have two or three minutes left. Um, Should we want to move to the ending then and have? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And here are some of the spaces they shared on mm -hmm. Padlet as well. Can I invite you, working with your faculty, if you're either with Tammy or Mary or on your own, to take other pictures of your campus now, like I said earlier, to do an audit of your campus and, and send them to me, and then I will tell your story. One of the schools that I, go back, I want to, one of the schools I worked with didn't have any money to do anything, and they had an absolutely horrible library, so the facilities officer had a contest. If people had a good idea, they got $100 to $200 to make the idea happen. One person, her idea was to put geranium plants in every window in the library. And, that, and he said that all, it was a student's idea, it was their idea, and it really, and they, the dance class, a couple of the students got together with their money and bought uh, Indian bedspreads and hung them over the dance room, the hall, the room in which they did their dance. So, you know, there are little things, the creative things that someone earlier mentioned the, the color place, what, what color does to it, think of something like that. So, and uh, students can't come together very safe. She, she and Tammy are gonna get you all together. So these are, are kind of your pictures as a, as a catchwork quilt of places that I found or, or um, and Mary ha helped me. And I wanna thank Mary right now before I forget her moving me through this. So here that, and I changed the font for this. I had an old English font to begin with. Here I have new font. And so you can think of this, you're, you're a Westminster special because of its relationship with Churchill. So you can start thinking we shape our buildings and then they shape us. Mary? So here's then my, my vision for you, my hope for you. And um, Mary will print this off so, or you can look at the whole set of things. So that together this group of, of 20 or 30 students that you've got to begin to have a shared language about how space is better. Students don't usually talk about how space is better. You feel it in your gut. This space works for me. I feel more like a community. I feel like I'm contributing. Um, understand how to examine your campus culture. So look around your campus and pay attention to what's going on at Westminster and see if there's a, you're, you're in, the, in the middle of dealing with COVID uh, crises and that there might be um, one campus I talked to, uh, the Dean of Fine Arts yesterday, two days ago, um, and he says the Fine Arts building, they've done white, white, board, white board paint on the outside of the music building and on the ground underneath that. The students are writing on the walls and they're writing on, on the um, driveways. They're walking on. Um, so that you, when, the third bullet that is, so that when you're responsible and working in a what next community, and I want you to think about this when you graduate and go look for a job and you can say, well, one of the things I can do very well is help you get your space. And so that's my, my dream for all of you. And, um, that I think we did we did the hour right Mary do you have final we, remarks Mary yes first I would like to if everybody can just unmute for a second so Jeannie can hear we're so grateful to have you on campus today thank you Jeannie thanks for joining us virtually um, students, I also want to just acknowledge and thank our wonderful co-hosts, Dr. Enzur and Dr. Baumgartner. Thank you for bringing your students to this learning experience. I want to thank IT for all the great work that they have done in supporting us. And students, thank you for joining us and actively participating. You've made this great. Jeannie, thank you so much for your time. And folks, don't forget there's dinner and a panel of speakers tonight. Jeannie, thank you.